I would like to share this message together with you. The message is entitled, Capacity Without Power. Capacity Without Power. Ningependa nishiriki na nyinyi neno hili ambalo kama vile nimesema nimekuwa nikilitafuna nikisaidiwa na roho wa Mungu na linahusu hatima zetu. Na kile ambacho mimi Mungu amekuwa akinisaidia ni ya kwamba vile Mungu alivyo tutengeneza tuko na capacity ya kufanya mambo fulani. That means God is not dealing with capacity he has already wired you. Bwana asifiwe sana. He has already engineered you. In fact, not you alone. Every human being on the face of the earth, they are wired with a certain capacity. Lakini dio waweze kudilize that capacity wanahitaji nguvu kiasi fulani. Na nikawa anapachukua mifano tofauti. Ukichukua mifano kama ya mashini ambazo huwa tunatumia Unaweza kuta kama hizi mashine ongea nazo pale nyuma kuna amplifier. Saa zingine hata huwa tunafanya mikutano ya MBCI juu ya saa zingine stima kupotea tunakomboa generator. Tunaweza kuwa kwa roli tunatangaza na generator ya 7 to 10 kVA. Lakini tukienda pale kwa uwanja wale technician wanasema hii generator haiwezi ku drive hizi vyombo. So inabidi tutafutie generator ya 15 to 20 kVA kwa sababu zile vyombo zinatumika kwa sauti ya hema nzima ziko na capacity kubwa zinahitaji nguvu nyingi. Bwana asifuwe sana. Na kwa hivyo nikumaanisha ya kwamba the bigger the capacity the more the power that is required wale wako na ujuzi zaidi tunajua kwamba kuna mashini ambazo zinahitaji moto wa single face. Wengine hata pengine kwenu stima wakati wale wanaleta stima walikuja wakakuuliza andika nyumba hii muko na bulb ngapi? Kuna fridge, kuna nini? Wakaangalia. Walipoangalia wakaona hii nyumba yako inahitaji single face. Lakini kuna wengine hata wakati pengine anataka moto wa stima already kuna mashini kama ya posho mill ama mashini za welding. Sasa hiyo lazima akiwekewa moto awekewe moto wa three phase kwa sababu ya capacity ya machine zinazotumika. Na mfano huu unatuonyesha vizuri ya kwamba na sisi katika maisha yetu tunaweza kuwa na capacity lakini pia tunahitaji nguvu za kuweza kufanyisha hiyo capacity kazi. Siku hizi tumewacha kutumia kaseti lakini kaseti sijui kama unakumbuka siku za kaseti na siku hizi ile ya na stima sana kule Geshagi kuna wakati mawe ya redio ingefika mahali imekwisha ile mawe ya redio redio nyingi za siku zile zilikuwa na redio na zilikuwa na nini na kaseti mawe ikiisha ingeongea kwa redio Lakini ukiweka kaset inakula kamba. Muna kumbuka? Ya, yeah. ukiweka kaset inakula kamba. Ina, inangorota, inakula kamba, inasima. Inakuambia, niko na uwezo wa kucheza hii kamba, lakini power hakuna. Lakini radio ukiweka inafanya. Kuna watu hapa, upande wako wa radio unafanya. Lakini upande wa kaseti unakula kamba. Yaani kumaanisha kuna uwezo ndani yako unafanya kazi. Lakini kuna mambo ya merara ndani yako yanagojea uunganishwe na nguvu yafanye kazi. Kuna uwezekano hata wakati mwingine ambapo tunasema mtu amepokea kipawa, sio kipawa amepokea, alikuwa na huo uwezo ndani yake ni nguvu hakukuwa nazo Bwana asifiwe sana. Sasa wacha tusome Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 ndio tuweze kuendelea pamoja. Tunataka tuangalie undani wa ujumbe huu juu ya capacity without power. Kwa sababu mimi kulingana na vile Mungu ananisaidia ni ya kwamba shida ya kanisa ni ya kwamba kanisa iko na capacity ya kuleta ukombozi. Lakini power 
ndio hatuna Ephesians 2:10 inasema hivi Inasema for we are God workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them Bwana asifiwe sana We are what God workmanship created in for what for good works which were done what which God prepared beforehand we should walk in them sasa sikia hapa wale wa china ama wa japanese ambao hutengeneza marori ya kuchimba barabara huwa wanaangalia barabara tunayoenda kuchimba iko namna gani ili wajue hii barabara iko na mawe hii hii gari yetu ya kuchimba lazima iwe na horsepower ki, kiasi fulani hata kama itakuwa inakunywa mafuta nyingi lazima iwe na nguvu kiasi fulani sasa naye bibi anasema ya kwamba Mungu aliona kazi utakayoifanya baadaye akakutengeneza kwa hivyo akikutengeneza alikutengeneza ukiwa na capacity ya kufanya ile kazi ameona Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Because hawezi uh, kufungilia tukutuk jembe ya kuchimba barabara. Hata tukutuk yenyewe kubeba hiyo jembe itashindwa. So wale wanatengeneza tinga ya kuchimba barabara waliona capacity. Na kwa sababu wakati mwingine tumetumia hizo maroli za kuchimba na nini, hizo magari huwa zinakunywa mafuta kwa sababu ziko na engine ziko na horsepower nyingi Bwana asifiwe sana zingine zinahitaji moto mwingi nasi vile Mungu ametutengeneza aliona kile tutafanya kama tungekuwa na wakati tungeangalia Psalms 139 from verse 13 maybe kama tunaweza kuangalia huko haraka Psalms 139 from verse 13 unaweza kuona Mungu vile alivyo kuumba alijua ni anakutengeneza kwa sababu ya kusudi fulani Psalms 139 from verse 13 nasema for you formed my inward parts you covered me in my mother's womb hiyo my inward parts ningetaka uiweke mahali at the back of your mind kwa sababu utakuja kuirudia kwa sababu inward parts inasimamia your spirit man Ninapoongea juu ya your capacity siongee juu ya your physical man naongea juu ya your spirit man let's go to verse 14 the bible says you created your my inward part my spirit man i praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well verse 15 the bible says my frame was not hidden from you Your frame is your spirit man. Kabla Mungu hajakupatia mwili, aweke nyama juu yako. There was a frame and that frame was your spirit man. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret place and skill free. Angalia hao maneno. And skill free Lord in the lowest parts of the earth. Verse 16. Your eyes saw my substance. Your substance is your spirit man. Other version ni nasema your eyes saw my residue being yet unformed and in your book they were all written the days fashioned for me when as yet there was none of them Mungu aliandika mpaka your expiry date verse 17 How precious are your thoughts to me O God how great is the sum of them yani ni hekima kubwa ya Mungu verse 18 ya mwisho if I should count them they would uh, be Uh, more in number than the sand when i awake i am still with you bwana asifiwe sana what do i mean you are engineered you are wired for something praise the name of the living god wakati mungu alikutengeneza alikutengeneza kwa sababu ya kazi na kusudi fulani praise the name of the living god that means you are created with capacity Bwana asifiwe sana. You are engineered or designed for a purpose. Praise the name of the living God. That means God wired you for a purpose. Because destiny is about intent. 
It is about pre-existing plan. It's about God predetermined your end before the beginning. Bwana asifuwe sana. Kwa hivyo kile kiwa kinafanya watu ende kutafuta nguvu hata za witchcraft ni kwa sababu dani yao wanasikia wako na uwezo wa kufanyika but you have to be connected with power. That is why people go to witchcraft. Because wanasikia wako na capacity. Lakini hii capacity inahitaji nguvu. Bwana asifuwe sana. Hallelujah. Are we together so far? Kumbuka gari zote zinaenda kwa petrol station. Generator ikiwekwa mafuta kwa petrol station haiwezi kuwa matatu. Power saw ikiwekwa mafuta kwa petrol station haiwezi kuwa haiwezi kuwa generator. Kumaanisha tukiunganishwa na nguvu tunafanya kazi kulingana na the way we are designed. Kulingana the way we are wired. Power is the same. But the functioning hata sasa hizi nguvu za Mungu zikishuka hapa wengine wata manifesta huduma karama huduma ya uponyaji wengine wata, wa, watakuwa wafanyi biashara wakubwa wengine wata excel in leadership nguvu zikishuka hapa utaona kila mtu ata function kulingana na vile amekuwa engineered kulingana na vile amekuwa wired na kwa hivyo challenge tulio nayo ni ya kwamba the capacity is already there can somebody say i have the capacity but I need power of equal measure. You need power of equal measure with the capacity you have. Kuna machine ukiweka moto ya single face haita kusaidia. Because wa moto pengine uone tu inazunguka lakini kama ni ya kusiaga haiwezi kusiaga eh? kwa sababu ile nguvu unaipatia ni kidogo. Lazima upatie ile machine kulingana na nguvu kulingana na capacity yake. Wengine muko na capacity kubwa. Lazima muamini mu, Mungu awapatie nguvu sawa sawa na capacity iliyo ndani yenu. Jina la Bwana lipewe sifa. Hallelujah. Somebody make this prayer pray. Oh Lord. I pray that in this season I'm going to be connected with the power that I need to function according to your will. In Jesus' name, be connected from today. This is a season of being connected with power. Praise the name of the living God. Wacha tuangalie katika kitabu cha Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. Luke 5, 17, nasema. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them or to heal the sick. Some versions say the power of the Lord was present to heal the sick. Here uh, in Luke 5.17. Watch at Luke 8.43. And I look 8.43. Look 8.43 and I say, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? Verse 46. But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from where? From me. Bwana sifuwe sana. Luke 5.17 inatuambia kwamba, Yesu amezungukwa na watu but the power to heal the sick was present bwana asifiwe sana that means uh, jesus was not jesus was a healer but he needed power to release the healing bwana asifiwe sana he had the capacity to heal 
Bwana asifiwe sana. But he required power to be able to release that healing. Bwana asifiwe sana. Nataka kusema ya kwamba unaweza kuwa uko na uwezo wa kuponya ama kuleta uponyaji. Lakini unahitaji nguvu ndio ule uponyaji uwe manifested. Bwana asifiwe sana. Sasa hapa tunasoma katika kitabu cha Luke 8:43. Binasema tunajua the, the, the woman ambaye alikuwa amesafa miaka 12 chini ya mikononi mwa madaktari wengi ambao hawezi kumsaidia. Lakini akawa convicted, huyu Yesu nikienda niguze pinde la vazi lake nitapona. Wakati alienda akaguza pinde la vazi la Yesu, Yesu akasema, "Ye mwanamke alipoguza alipona." Lakini Yesu akasema, "Eh, hey, kuna mtu ameniguza." Bwana asifiwe sana. Watu wakasema ni nani amekuguza sasa? Petero akamuuliza, "Si unaona watu wanafinyana? Watu wengi wanakuguza." Yesu akasema, "Sio hiyo na maanisha. Kuna moja ameniguza na nimesikia nguvu zimenitoka." Kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha ndio ule mwanamke apone, kuna nguvu zilitoka ndani ya Yesu ndio apone. That means hata kama Biblia imetupatia uwezo wa kuponya na kufufua wale ambao wamekufa hatuwezi kufanya hiyo kazi hata kama tuko na capacity lazima kuwe na power praise the name of the living god na liposa ukisoma Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 Yesu akawaambia wanafunzi wake msiondoke Jerusalem Luke 24:49 but they but they constrained him saying abide with us 49 24:49 not 29 behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high version zingine zinasema until you are clothed with power from on high yani kumaanisha ya kwamba msiondoke mko na uwezo wa kuponya mko na mamlaka ya kuponya lakini mnahitaji nguvu praise the name of the living god so lazima mgoje jerusalem paka muweze kupokea nini gufu that means the church has a capacity believers has a capacity bwana asifiwe sana but we lack the power what the church is missing is power and that is why paul said in the book of uh, uh, first timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 uh, what did paul say Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. Um Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. Having pare juu inaanza kutakuwa na nyakati za shida there will be perilous times but having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away Bibi nasema shida ya kanisa siku za mwisho itakuwa na watu walio na a form of godliness but they deny the power. Shida ya kanisa siku ya leo ni kwamba tumekataa nguvu za Mungu ambazo zingetusaidia. Na siku ya Jumapili tulisoma ya kwamba Isaiah 63 and verse 3. Tulisoma tukaona ya kwamba Mungu hutiisha maadui zake. Psalm 66 and verse 3 the Bible says say to God How awesome are your works through the greatness of your power your enemies shall submit themselves to you through what the greatness of your power praise the name of the living god your enemies will do what submit so enemies not submit because of the greatness of your church because of the greatness of your teaching the greatness of your sermon Enemies not submit because of the greatness of your grammar. Enemies not submit because of the greatness of your equipment. And you see, shida ya kanisa tunaangalia ukuu wa mijengo, wa vyombo, wa kuongea vizuri, wa kupanga mess. Hayo mambo yote ni sawa. Lakini maadui watatii kwa sababu ya ukuu na uweza wa nguvu za Mungu juu yako. Praise the name of the living God. 
Hallelujah. We need the power of God so that the enemies in our lives can submit. Praise the name of the living God. You know, things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. To me, Ambiwa Ruk 5.17, Yakwamba, Yesu, Gubu za kuponya wagonjo wa zirikuwa pale. The power to heal the sick was what? Pleasant. Kwa hivyo, Yesu wakuwa naombea wagonjo wa na musisimuko. Tiwacha ni ombea hata huyu afunguke macho. Wacha hata huyu kiwete ya tembe. Apana. Yesu aliakikisha the power to heal is there. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Because things don't just happen. Did you know? This world we are living, there are so many powers at work. That even for you to make progress in your lives. Hata ukiona unafanya mambo kwa wepesi. Ukitaka kununua proti unanunua. Ukitaka kujenga nyumba unajenga. Ukitaka kufungua biashara unafungua na inaenderea. Nataka ni kuambie, kama kuna mahali tungekua tunapere kwa clinic, sisi wote, tupimwe. Uyo mtu unaona tu anafanya kila jambo linafauru. Anafanya kila jambo linafauru. Unaweza kute ya kwamba kuna nguvu nyingi zinafanya kazi katika maisha yake. Bwana siwe sana. Because kile huwa kinafanya kuwe na stagnation. Tunajaribu kufanya kitu hatuwezi kufauru. Hatuwezi kuendelea. Maadui zetu anafauru. Mipango yao juu yetu. Ni kwa sababu wakuna power ya kuwa resist. Bwana siwe sana. And so, sometimes you may see people walking physically, but you, you never be able to know the measure of the power of God, or even of the devil, at work in their lives. Kuna matijiri wengi ya bao, wanatebea na nguvu nyingi za kishetani. Wameweka mizimu, wamefanya makafara, wameua hata watu, diyo wapate hizo nguvu, lakini wanatebea na nguvu. Kwa hivyo huu ulimwengu ni ulimwengu wa nguvu. Even the Bible says the kingdom of God suffer the violence. And the violence shall take it by force. You cannot take something by force if you are weak. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 9, verse 21, tunaona juu ya mtu ambaya naitua Saul. Na Saul hapa, mungu wa namuita awe mfalme wa kwanza wa Israeli. Kupitia nabi Samuel. Angaria, bibini ya sema ya kwamba, And Saul answered and said, Am I not a Bejamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin, why then do you speak like this to me? Bwana sifu sana. Mtu huyu atambaya ya naitua Saul, hayuko peke yake. Maneno haya meneno na watu kama Gideon. Ya meneno na watu kama Moses. Ya kwamba mungu anaweza kuja katika maisha yako, anaona hile capacity ukonayo. Pengine hata ujaripa nyumba, anakuambia wewe you are a kingdom financier. Because he has wired you to make wealth. Lakini Deuteronomy 818 inasema ya kwamba, it is the Lord, you are God, who giveth you power to make. So you may have the capacity, but you need to be connected with the power. Praise the name of the living God. So that you can be able to manifest that which is in you. Sasa mungu wame muona soro. Israel wanataka mfalme. Na ameona Saul akona uwezo wakufanyika ama wakua mfalme wa Israel. Sasa wakati Saul ameambiwa na Samuel, anamuambia Samuel. Yani Samuel. Yani wewe ni nabi wa kweli. Mi naona kama umekosea. Haujui? Don't you know I am a Benjamite? Don't you know that my clan is the smallest? Don't you know that I am the youngest in my family? How do you even know? Lakini, Saul, anashindwa ya kwamba mungu, anajua capacity ya Saul. Sasa vile ambavyo Samuel alia device Samuel, Saul, ukienda chapter 10, the same book. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 5. Wacha tuwane advice ya Samuel. Limuambiaji. After that, you shall come to the hill of God. Where the Philistines garrison is. And it will happen. When you have come there to the city. That you meet a group of prophets. Coming down from the high priest. 
with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a fruit, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. You shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offerings seven days, and you shall wait till seven day, till I come to you and show you what you should do. So it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. Verse 10, we are going up to verse 11. When they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied, and he prophesied among them. Verse 11. And it happened when all, when all who knew him formerly saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets, that is prophets, uh, prof, uh, Saul, that the people said to one another, what is this? that has come upon the son of Kish, is Saul among the prophets. Uh, let's combine that with the numbers 11, 24, and 25. Numbers 11, 24, and 25. The Bible says, So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tabernacle. Verse 25. Uh, then the Lord came down, in the crowd and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and he praised the same upon the 70 elders and it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied although they never did so again. Huh? They prophesied but they did not prophesy again. Watch and ikwereze. Kiri ambacho ningetaka ushike hapa. Ya kwamba Saul amenda kwa Samuel Na mungu waredi ya memfunuria uh, Saul atakuwa mfanme. Saul haoni capacity yake. Lakini mungu wanajua Saul, I have engineered him. I have wired him. Praise the name of the living God. He can become a king. Bwana asifia sana. Did you know siyo kira mtu naeza kuchukua in a position? Hata siyo kira mtu naeza kuwa president? There are people who are wired. There are people who have the capacity. There are people who, have, who are engineered. Who are wanasema in the whole world, the most challenging job is to be a CEO of a country. Kazi ya kuwa president of a nation is very challenging. Wengine wenu wata ukiwa president uh, three months, kichwa itahalibika. Uziona kama ni kazi raisi. Bwana sifia sana. Hallelujah. Wengine ukiwa uwe apostol kimani that days. Utaadika resignation later. Bona suwe sana. Siyo kila mtu wakona capacity ya kufanya kila kitu. Hata my wife huwa naniambia. Wewe, nina kupigia salute. Bona suwe sana. Because it's all about capacity. Hatuna the same capacity. Hata kuna watu wananiliza nga posto hii mambo yote unakuanga nae. Unabebanga na mnagani. Yani ukona hii, ukona hii, unafanya hii. Hausikia gikichwa ikizuguka. Haikusumbui. Lakini mimi sisiki yangi kini subua. Bwana aswe sana nitakuja hapa ni hubiri vizuli. Ni malize. Ni yende ni zunguke mjengo. Ni toke hapo. Mimi haini sumbui. Ni nabeba mambo haa yote. It is all about capacity. God has wired us. He has engineered us. Because he saw the work before the work came. Kabla ya kazi kuja. Mungu aliona hiyo kazi. Na kanitengeneza. Ya komba nitaweza kufanya hile kazi, ananiitia. Bwana sifuwe sana. So, mungu ya naona Saul. Ya komba Saul atakuwa mfanume. Lakini Saul kuna kitu moja haerewi. Ya komba for the capacity to work, he must be connected to the power of God. So, somewhere akam position, akam wambia, utaenda, utakutana na manabi wanaotabili, utajiunga na wow. These were zealous men of God. They are already coming from seeking the face of God. The power of God is already mightily upon them. They are prophesying. Bwana asifuwe sana. 
wengine tunafaa pengine wengine Mungu alikuleta hapa kwa sababu aliona pengine hapa kuna three face power ya kuactivate kile umebeba Bwana asifiwe sana Haleluya kwa hivyo Sora alitumwa mahali Mungu alijua huyu ni kimtuma hapa kile kiko ndani yake kitagurumishwa Jina bana nipewe sifa Sasa wakati alienda roho wa Mungu alishuka juu yake akaanza kutabiri Mungu akaambiwa aka na, na, na Samuel sasa ukiona hiyo imetimia wewe enda ufanye chochote utaonelea kufanya Mungu wako pamoja na wewe you have been connected Bibi inasema ya kwamba Sora akaanza kutabiri paka watu wakauliza yani hata mtoto wa kishi amekuwa nabii amekuwa nabii mm. oh shatara baganda reka baganda raba shata kuna engine Mungu alitengeneza akaiweka ndani yako Huyu mtu wa nje ni covering. But there is, a, there is an engine in you. I want to connect that engine with the power of God. Reba shata baganda bashata. Reka baganda raba shata raba ganda. Wengine mtakuwa mnaona mambo wazi. Mungu atakuwa na wabeba mnaona mambo yanayopangwa kwa asili. Mtakuwa mnasikia sauti za watu wazi wanapoongea kwa siri Mungu anafanya tu asikize ni kama wanaongea ukiwa pale utabebwa uonyeshwe mambo ah shata rabaganda reka baganda raba shata reka baganda raba shata reka baganda raba the day of his power has come the day makata huu ndio wakati maadui wa Mungu they are going to submit they must submit Oh wachawi lazima watasubmita. Waabudue shetani. He hawataweza. Hawataweza. Madhabahu mengine yote hayataweza. Mm. Jesus. Rababosha da. Rekabaganda rababosh. Rekabaganda rababosh for watching this program we know it has been a blessing to you we highly appreciate your prayers and support to get apostle john kimani's messages in its whole entirety call the numbers on your screen god bless you all the days of my life.